But she said, most Americans have never tasted real chocolate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that's true. Most, most of the chocolate that we know, um, Hershey's, Reese's, Halloween candies, Christmas candy, and all that other junk, Valentine's Day, that is mostly corn. Yep. And, and, and sugar. sugar. Yeah. And it doesn't really contain that much chocolate at all. And real chocolate is rich and uh, fatty and powerful and full of nutrients and phytonutrients that actually is protective against cancer. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of benefits. And it's actually very, it's, it's filling in a different way because it kind of um, hits your sweet tooth, but it's fatty and actually has a great deal of fiber in it as well. Yeah. So if you get the right kind of chocolate, it's an excellent choice. So the way that you can pick it out is when we're looking at chocolate, we tend to always go above 70% mm -hmm. uh, cocoa. And you you want to try to get organic, fair trade, because you can, <clears throat> within the ingredients, there's often an emulsifier or something that makes the chocolate stick together and mm -hmm. stay in this nice bar form. So a lot of times they'll use GML soy lecithin. Uh, they'll also tend to use in not organic bars, they'll sneak in... Um, GMO beet sugar. Hmm. So that's something that you definitely want to avoid. Usually bars like that aren't using the best chocolate either, so they don't taste quite as good. But this is a bean to bar from Madagascar. There are lots of different kinds. When you get into chocolate, it's kind of like picking out a fine wine. <laughs> so <clears throat> don't worry about it too much, but have some fun with it. Just go for 70 plus percent and see how high you can go. Like some, I really, there are some bars that are like 90 plus percent yep. that are almost pure chocolate. And I love them. Yeah. I don't need that much sweetness. And if you want to make your own chocolate treats, you're going to actually be buying cocoa or cacao. And yeah. you will be amazed if you look at the nutritional label, pure cocoa or cacao mm. is, we're talking fiber and protein powerhouse. So you will be shocked in addition to all the antioxidants. So shall we shall we bust open the suitcase here and see how I did? Yeah. Let me do oh, yeah, sure, one more quick thing. So these are great um, options in terms of vegetables to take on the road so uh celery is pretty robust very robust and can handle <laughs> it uh, and it's nice and filling it provides Absolutely. you that bulk so a lot of times i'll have something like this and load it up with fiber yep to decrease the absorption time like yep. you said that's Absolutely. true on an empty stomach that can make you hungry it can mm -hmm. raise your insulin a lot and it'll be kind of like a meal that i create out of veggies eggs and then some sort of protein and then maybe a right. little bit of chocolate for dessert. But my favorite secret tool <laughs> that I take almost everywhere, I've taken them to Thailand, Brazil, uh, Europe, all over the place, are these little puppies, which mm. are, um, you can get all sorts of different kinds of nut butters, walnut butter. They can be raw or roasted. They have maple, honey, different kinds. And my favorite is raw coconut butter, mm. which is like the, the coconut the manna. manna that you were talking about. Good and stuff. So what this is, is... <laughs> just it's just coconut um and so it's almost pure fat but it also comes loaded with fiber and medium chain triglycerides it's low in sugar and i can actually uh even if i fast in the morning i can have one of these packets and it can keep me full yeah. um, or at least not hungry mm -hmm. for hours and hours uh if you're skiing or if you're um you're in a place where food isn't readily available. If you're backpacking or something like that, these are excellent options because they stay fresh for a really long time. Yes. And they don't come attached with any of the junk that's in something like a Cliff Bar, or Luna Bar, or other things that a lot of people are generally having. And All right, let's, let's bust open back. the bag here. <laughs> let's get it. All right, well, so a couple things. So one, I've got my little front compartment here. And uh, in my front compartment, I'm, this is where I keep my, my protein sources. So I've got, we've already talked about this, but we've got sardines. Um, you can get these in olive oil or water. Of course, try to make sure that they're sustainably harvested, no BPA, all that kind of fun stuff. But mm -hmm. these are, all of these non-perishables are easy to get on Amazon. You can get them online. Mm -hmm. um, I am a bar fan. <laughs> it's probably, you know, my, my guilty pleasure, but I, I do a lot of Quest bars. The they are delicious. They are really good. <laughs> That's kind of the problem. They're so good. Yeah. The um, and now let's just bust open the bag itself here, and what you will find is a lot of what we've already talked about. But I want to show you concretely. <laughs> All right. So a couple things. Just literally. Have, so we got some tums just in, <laughs> just in case <laughs> things go off the rail. Um, 
Makes the sound. Food is in here. So Dave Asprey talked about this in our uh, chat with him. These are desiccated beef liver tablets, which sounds delicious, but uh, I'm they're a whole food that just has the water it's taken out of it. So yeah, so these are just. This is just a hormone-free, grass-fed Argentinian beef liver with all the water, connective tissue, fat taken out. So literally like one of these pills is like a multivitamin, but yeah. it's a whole food just because yeah. it's so extremely nutrient dense. Um, I'm gonna have a couple right now. <laughs> <laughs> these are, and especially if, you, if you're not a fan of meat or red meat or you can't get clean red meat, I would almost consider this a requirement yeah. for optimal health because it gives you basically everything that's good about red meat just in like and it's it's a pill but it's not really a pill yeah and i remember when i when i switched from i was i was on and off vegan vegetarian for years and when i went uh to meet one of the first things i started with was liver and you can when you're deficient in a lot of these things you can switch yeah and you can feel it absolutely and you were talking about b vitamins yesterday five hour energy you're talking lots of b vitamins here Macadamia nuts, my favorite nut, extremely high in omega nines and healthy monounsaturated fats. The things that people say make olive oil healthy mm -hmm. are found in even higher concentrations in macadamia nuts. This is uh, uh, the powdered green superfoods we talked about. Yeah, so this cool. is a this is a blend of wheatgrass, spirulina, a bunch of powdered vegetables. Um, I get it from a company called Z Natural Foods mm -hmm. online. So it's basically whole foods. Yeah. Again, just dehydrated and chia seeds nice. so i eat these at for breakfast or in the evening just mix them in my hotel room with a cup of water enjoy it also have some shredded coconut but i ate all of it already because okay. you just take the shredded coconut some chia seeds put them in a cup in your hotel room and you're rocking and rolling so that really gets me through the day when i'm traveling i've got my healthy fats i've got my vegetables and i've got my protein Right, it's just almost that paint by numbers approach we talked about yesterday. That's awesome. Yeah, and I, I do very similar things. Let's talk from a lifestyle perspective about a couple of other things that you can uh, bring along on the road. You want to start with these guys? Absolutely. Yeah. So in terms of, we're going to get into resistance training in other segments, but the least heavy way <laughs> to transport yeah. resistance is resistance bands, and you can get these on Amazon.com anywhere for very inexpensive and you can get heavy bands. I, mm -hmm. I got a set of resistance bands from Amazon that has a 65 pound resistance band of 35 and a 45 pound. So, wow. you, I mean, you can really do a lot of good work with yeah. simple resistance. And we're talking sub $50 for yeah. the set. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite things to do on the road is, uh, especially if I'm crunch for time and they don't have a gym or don't have time to go there is just do a, a quick Tabata session in the morning with burpees, mm -hmm. which, which what that is, we'll get into this in more detail in other sessions, but this is kind of like my go-to on the road workout. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. You do 20 seconds of some sort of high intensity exercise. I usually do burpees, which are jumping up, doing a push up, then kind of doing a squat and popping back up and mm -hmm. clapping your hands. The people downstairs always love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you do as many as you can in 20 seconds, then you rest for 10, and you repeat that 8 to 10 times. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. for me, it takes me about 5 minutes. Yep. And if you're not smoked by the end of that, yep. you're doing it wrong. Yep. <laughs> so Absolutely. that's a great workout on the road. You don't even have to bring resistance bands or anything. So don't use the fact that you don't have any equipment as an excuse not to get some sort of activity in, especially if it's an extended uh, bit of travel. One one note there though is that generally when you're traveling, people are a little bit worn out. Your mm -hmm, immune system mm -hmm. has probably been compromised a bit because you're blasted with, as Dave said in, mm -hmm. in the bonus segment, with artificial fragrance fragrances and jet fuel fumes, and and uh, not to mention all the dozens of people who are probably on your plane in that closed chamber with who knows what that they were giving you. So make sure that you especially prioritize sleep while Absolutely. you're on the road uh, because you're going to be compromised in, in some way or another. And you don't want to over-exercise when you're already stressed out. Absolutely. Because what that does is it, it's actually a stressor yeah. and it can further compromise your immune system. So doing something really quick and simple and high intensity is a great option because mm -hmm. uh, it reduces the amount of risk of compromising your health, yep. um, but it maximizes the benefit of you actually. I, I get a lot of energy just from doing that four to five minute workout in the Absolutely. morning. I feel totally rocked out for the rest of the day. It's the blood pumping, and for individuals out there who may not be able to do things like burpees or like more of these explosive mm -hmm. movements, don't worry, because in future sessions, we're gonna show, the key thing Abel mentioned there, which is spot on, is the intensity. Mm -hmm. You wanna go short, but intense. And intense can be 
speed, meaning you move faster, yeah. that increases intensity, or you can use resistance and actually moving slower mm -hmm. to increase intensity, and we'll cover that too. So really, lack of equipment and being in a hotel room does not have to compromise your ability yep. to exercise smarter, nor does it have to compromise your ability to eat sanely and healthfully if you have the right information. Totally. And let's talk just a little bit more about sleep. Oh, and one, one note, we mentioned this also in the Dave Asprey segment. Uh, tap water is not always a great option. There are a lot of things in it that can be harmful. Chlorine, fluorine, um, sometimes pathogens, mm -hmm. jet fuel also <laughs> can, can be found in it. Um, there can also be BPA in bottled water, but especially when you're traveling um, and especially out of the country, sometimes your best option, which is kind of the lesser of a few evils, is drinking bottled water. Uh, so that's always a go-to for me at at airports because it's really important to stay hydrated. Most people are dehydrated most of the time, Absolutely. especially when you're flying at 30,000 feet. It's really easy to get dehydrated. So make sure you're drinking water. Um, and then let's, let's finally, let's cover sleep a little bit. Um, I talked about this in another segment. What this is, is a grounding mat. And this, uh, <laughs> when you're bouncing around at 30,000 feet, uh, plus in a lot of cases, it's a very unnatural state for your body. And mm -hmm. so there are basically electricity and uh, magnetic pieces and, and of what's going on around you, uh, even power lines and all these things can affect your natural nervous system, which is all run on electricity. So these mm -hmm. electromagnetic forces actually can affect you. Now, that all sounds a little bit nuts and woo-woo, but there is research that supports a lot of this. They don't know exactly why um, grounding humans works in mm -hmm. some cases, um, but I can personally attest anecdotally, I don't travel without a, uh, a grounding mat because what it does is it basically... It used to be the case where I'd sleep like six hours on the road. I'd usually wake up in the night. When you use a grounding mat, the first few times we used it, we found that we slept eight to ten hours wow. uninterrupted. Um, and it's it's incredible the difference that this makes. And it's only about 75 bucks. You can find it. I think I got this on Amazon. Nice. Um, and you can get more expensive ones. We, we actually have it at home as well in the bedroom. Um, and that it helps us sleep better. You get kind of like an interesting tingling feeling when, <laughs> yeah. you, when you first get it. But you can tell. And, and if you're totally jet lagged, one of the best things you can do is just go outside after you get off the plane or you get to your hotel or you get back home. Put your feet on the ground, just naked, no, mm -hmm. no socks, no shoes or anything else. And just stay there for about 20 minutes. One of the reasons it, it feels so good to walk on the beach is because you're literally connecting with the electromagnetism mm -hmm. of the earth mm -hmm. and uh this is where it gets interesting where hippies <laughs> and technologists and scientists collide yeah um science is starting to show why some of this works um but let's just suffice it to say we don't have a lot of time to get into great detail but try to especially when you're doing something super unnatural like traveling try to be as natural as you can. Take that walk on the beach, go outside, get some fresh air, yep. detox, relax. It's a stressful thing whether you realize it or not. So melatonin is something we bring on the road. Um, but pretty much everyone I know who is in our field yep. uses it as, as a tool when you're jet lagged especially. It can help you if you take it about 30 minutes before you. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> melatonin and valerian root right nice. there. Yeah, exactly. and you, like, you like the combo. Yep. Uh, so for valerian for me actually tends to get me totally wired which is very strange. You know, like a lot of these <laughs> supplements and even prescription drugs can have sometimes the opposite effect on yep. certain pieces of the uh, population. So it's really important as with everything else to, to see what works for you. Yeah. Um, and we all have our own little idiosyncrasies and it's important to, to honor that. Absolutely. Um, so Absolutely. make sure you're not just following people's advice, see what works for you, see how you feel the best. Uh, and, and finally, I talked about these a bit in the other segment. These make you look super cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're uh, blue blocking glasses. And so what they do is uh, I put them on generally a few hours before bed, especially if I'm using technology. Uh, and what they do is they pull out the blue spectrum of light. And what the blue spectrum of light does is it tells your body uh, that it's still daylight mm -hmm, outside. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also very stressful on your eyes themselves. Mm -hmm. You can get eye strain really easily using computers and technology at night. So if we're watching a movie, 
uh, or if we're on our computers working late, which we try not to do, but sometimes you know it's just part of the process, especially Absolutely. if you're on your own. This is a really powerful tool. These ones, I think, were 75 bucks. Uh, they're gunners. I like them. They're pretty durable. I, I take them on the road. You can even get some of those, a, a similar t- tint that pulls out uh, blue light, just those uh, yellowish glasses or orange glasses that you get at a hardware store, and those mm-hmm. are like seven bucks. So if Absolutely. you're on a budget, that's pretty cool too. And I think, I think those are all of our fun tools for now. Yeah, I think it's, <laughs> I think it's pretty awesome. And Abel, one thing that I really just getting back to some of the things we talked about in previous segments, which is the importance of protein and fats mm-hmm. on satiety. What a lot of people find is the first time they allow themselves to eat some macadamia nuts mm-hmm. and some eggs and some veggies. They'll be like, well, you know, I'm not hungry yeah. after I can be on a six hour flight mm-hmm. and I'm not hungry and I feel satisfied and then I'm not stressed because I'm like, oh, yeah. where am I getting my food? I don't have to go grab a Cinnabon and I don't have to grab a, a triple espresso with mm-hmm. a bunch of sugar in it because you feel good and you feel healthy. So yeah. travel is sometimes a necessary evil. And with all these tools, I feel like we can not only avoid badness, but yeah. even propagate goodness when we, when we take these steps. And really the secret to having success on the road is good planning. Absolutely. Um, and, and that's what really separates a lot of the people who have success with this from the people who don't mm-hmm. is not knowing what to do, but actually doing it ahead of time and Absolutely. planning for all this. So <clears throat> one, the way that I used to feel about flying was I would go to, to comfort foods. You know, a lot of, that's why Cinnabon has such success in the airport. Cause as soon as you get off the plane, as soon as you walk in there, you know, it's like the most delicious smell uh, <laughs> for someone who's, you know, kind of faint hearted yeah. at that point and, and kind of run down. Um, the way that I think about it now is that when I'm on a plane in an airport, I instinctively know that this is not a place where I get good food. Yep. At, at most, I'll get a salad, maybe, which are usually miserable in the airport. <laughs> but um, it's, it's a great excuse just to kind of try to relax, drink some water, do some reading, and, uh, and try not to fall prey to all of this junk food here or even the meals that are on the road. And you'll find that especially if you stock up on macadamia nuts and some of these fats and you combine yeah. that just drinking fresh water or uh, water from a bottled water, uh, you'll, you'll feel so much better than you did when you're eating the Doritos and the pretzels and yep. the peanuts that they serve on the airplane and drinking the Coke or the Coke Zero yeah. or whatever. Eat real food and stay healthy on the road. It's, it's not that hard and it's absolutely worth it. I love it. And you'll be much more effective when you get to your destination, which is always important. That's right. You're going to rock the house. Love it.